you know, had a session with a activist in Connecticut who wanted a protected bike lane on their street. And they were saying, you know, for them, the big issue is the mayor could not give less of a crud about what they had to say. And it's like, okay, well, so they know what they want, but they're, and they know the issue is that the mayor doesn't care. So let's talk about how you get a mayor to care. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman and that is Carter Lavin uh, from Oakland, California. And we are talking about uh, what it takes to get engaged uh, as a community member, as an activist, as an advocate, and uh, some of the training services that he provides uh, for folks uh, across the country. Uh, so without further ado, let's get to it with Carter Lavin. Carter Lavin, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Welcome. Thank you. It's so good to be here on the podcast, and I love a lot of the work that you do, and Active Towns is such a good framework. Exciting to talk with folks about it. Fantastic. Well, hey, I'd love to have my uh, guests just sort of uh, introduce themselves, so I'll turn the floor over to you and uh, do just like a 30-second uh, introduction. Who is Carter? Sure. Uh, so I'm Carter Lavin. Nice to meet you all. I train transportation activists, uh, folks who are working on bike issues, pedestrian issues, bus issues, train issues, things like that. I'm a big believer that if you want to win, you got to fight. And a lot of times I think transportation activists say, you know, it should be easier to get around town or why doesn't this rail line exist already? And the answer is because you haven't fought for it enough. And so I train people to fight for it. And I'm excited to talk with you about how we make more towns active towns. Fantastic. That's great. Uh, what, what sort of your background? Yeah, so I've been a, an active activist for over 17 years on a wide variety of issues. Um, one of the biggest ones was in the solar industry here in California, where I really got a lot of deep experience um, doing a lot of uh, lobbying and advocacy work on something that should make a lot of sense. You know, it's one of those things. It's like, well, shouldn't this yeah. happen? Much like <laughs> pedestrian safety is one of those wait, why do we have to fight for this type of thing? Right. And yeah. you really just learn that whole like, yeah, unfortunately everything in the world is deeply political. Right. Whether you like it or not, doesn't matter. You still have to get engaged. Um, so there was you know, lots of issues there. And then as side projects, I would be taking on efforts like trying to get a bus only lane on the Bay Bridge uh, connecting Oakland and San Francisco. Uh, we got a law passed through the state Senate, which um, not, it didn't ultimately go through, but you know, that was types of side projects. I've helped uh, friends run for city council, was elected delegate to the California Democratic Party. So basically like have fought lots of fights, won several, lost several, learned a lot and really want to help people win their fight because there's, there's a million things that could be fixed in communities across the country. And so whether we're talking about, you know, Springfield, Massachusetts or Springfield, Illinois, or any of the other Springfields in the world, like, I want them to win. I want them to be more active towns. And that means helping the people in those towns who also want that you know, be more successful. Right. Yeah. Now, I, I grew up not far from you on, on a ranch uh, just north of uh, Sacramento. Are you originally from the Oakland area? No. So I'm originally a mid-Atlantic mutt. Uh, so Montclair, New Jersey, Bethesda, Maryland, uh, Ardmore, Pennsylvania. So these are all kind of like inner suburbs where of major cities where you have that like, oh, I could get to the big city because there's trains, because there's buses, or you know, because you can bike around. Um, but so I had a lot of that like suburban urban experience growing up and really firsthand felt like the, the freedom of mobility was a big thing for me, you know, of, um, okay, if I get on my bike and I'm 13, how, how big is my world? How small is my world? Um, I moved out to California about 11 years ago uh, and yeah, never, ne never moving out of Oakland unless, unless something really catastrophic happens, but uh, it's my yeah. home. Okay, cool. That's, that's great. And so, so you were active in, in sort of that solar industry and really trying to move that along and, and, and bring it to a, a level of, of prominence in California, which, uh, congratulations. I mean, the state of California is further along than any other state in, in, in regards, I, I believe, I mean, that's my outsider's you know, perspective. I'm certainly not an expert on that, but it seems like California is much further along than many other states in that regard. Well, and it's a big example of, um, I think a lot of times people say, well, of course it would be uh, because, you know, it's California, hippie, dippy, liberal, whatever. It's like, well, actually, 
Texas is a really good renewable energy state as well. And New Jersey is as well. And Germany is and all these different places, because at the end of the day, it's about politics. It's about political will and it's about fighting for it. And I think this is one of those things where, you know, whether people are in Austin or San Antonio or where have you, and they say, oh, well, I'd love a bike lane, but we're not, we're not Amsterdam. You know, we're not even Utrecht. It's like, well, fun fact, those places weren't those places either. Uh, You have to do that work. And I think one thing that I've seen from my clean energy experience and I've seen being a transportation activist for years as well is a lot of times people get confused when they say, well, this policy or this change makes so much sense and would save lives and would be so easy. Why doesn't it happen? It's like, yeah, you, there's a couple of steps between here and there. Right. Right. Well, what's interesting too is, and I get this all the time on the podcast and uh, from viewers who are watching the podcast on YouTube, as well as people who are listening and they, uh, you know, leave a comment or send an email and say, I'm inspired. I want to do something. I want to change. What do I do now? And usually my answer is, is you, you have to start at your block level. You have to start talking to your neighbors and start engaging. Um, you're taking it a step further in, in terms of uh, what you're saying, because you're also you know, saying, hey, you also need to kind of understand how the game works and get some you know, information and some education on what it means to be an advocate for and an activist for these issues that are, you know, important to you, you know, whether it's, it's the issue of, you know, Hey, we've got some pretty shitty bike lanes (laughs) and we we need to change something. And, uh, you know, and, and I noticed on that tweet there that there's a little bit of a, of a shame and blame, you know, sort of uh, attached to that. Um, but at the same time, we know that Twitter can sort of devolve into a, a, a spiral of negativity of shaming and blaming and nothing ever changes because then you get entrenched people in, in, in camps and, and they dig in, talk, walk us through how you can yeah. actually, you know, get, you know, uh, you know, maybe tone down the rhetoric a little bit of, of fighting and towards the level of, Hey, we need to first be able to educate and enhance awareness of our community so that we can broaden the base of support for change because we know the status quo is going to fight back and we're going to have, uh, you know, a, a NIMBY sort of approach to it. So take it Yeah. Away. And I think that's, yeah. And that's a great question. I think to your point about, um, kind of getting started and the first step to getting started is literally do anything. Um, and that's, you know, the, the good news about everything being so messed up is that almost anything you do is a step in the right direction. And so it is really about what is a thing you want to do. The, the other part though, is it becomes easier and less scary kind of if you know what you're doing. Um, If you say, okay, well, I got to talk to my neighbor because they, you know, if I want to speed bump, they're also on the street. Um, But what neighbor do I talk to or how do I talk to them? And, you know, about, uh, and we'll talk about this in a second, but a big thing is knowing how to engage with the neighbor. You're saying, oh, well, you know, it could be Phyllis and I don't like a lot about them. It's like, that's fine. Does Phyllis also not want to get hit by a flipping car? That you just have to get agreement on that. And so for example, you know, once you have kind of your idea articulated, you know, you're not, you're not proposing to these folks. You're not saying, Hey, let's get married. You're saying, Hey, do you agree with this sentence? Maybe these three sentences, maybe these four sentences, um, that's fine. And then a key part is making it easy for people to then say yes. So for example, I've been part of this effort in Oakland um, to get safer streets. And we, you know, these are a stack of a bunch of flyers that I put out and you know, helped gotten the community, which is just a kind of a simple message, safe streets, save lives. People can scan the code and add their name to the petition. And it has a little bit of language about what we're asking for. And then the key part about this particular image is uh, a lot of times people feel very alone. They say, oh, I'm the only one who cares. I'm the only one who wants to do anything. Um, That's wrong. That's not true. Uh, People care all the time. A big part is your job as the activist, your job as the kind of initiator 
is make it very, very, very easy for people to help you and to, for people to work with you. So you can't just say, hey, here's a petition, please like and subscribe and forward it along. You can, and people will do that. Um, and you can't say, hey, here's the petition, here's the, the, uh, the digital file, please print it out and pass it along. And some people will do that. But if you say to someone, here is a stack of flyers, please hand this out to people when you see them, and it's even a nice rubber band. Like This is something when you're passing out flyers or talking to a friend and they say, oh, that's a great idea. You say, thanks, I'm glad you like it. Here's, will, will you take 10 flyers to pass to other people? And you know, then you, you have to give it to them. You know, like make it easy for people to help you um, is a really key step for getting more help. Um, and I think to your point also about like rhetoric and learning, I think one reason why I have such faith in the kind of active towns movement is millions of people want what we want. Millions of people want what you want. You know, the person listening in on this, like you are not alone. None of us are alone. It's just about how do we navigate that properly? And so you had brought up a, a great tweet earlier, if you don't mind bringing that image back up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's a, and it's a, a wonderful example of like what a lot of internet activism can be how it can start and what can kind of um, snowball from there. And so this is a this is a scene that happens all the time all across America. And, and this is a person, Dr. Bike Mom, who's a great person, uh, just basically saying, hey, I almost got hit by this bus while biking. I'm in this bike lane. The bike lane's pretty crummy and it's only a matter of time before they kill someone. And they do a great job tagging the bus company so that the bus you know, social media person, intern, whoever says, oh, this is, ugh. you know, like, that's not good. Um, and, you know, and, I, and that got a lot of likes, a lot of retweets, a lot of activity. And the thing I just did is hopped in and tagged the mayor of the town because the mayor is the one who can say, yeah, let's get some protection there. Uh, that's the person who has that power. And it's not that much harder for them when the mayor sees it and other people chime in to say, okay, well, maybe let's make a petition. Like, look, 54 people like this. This seems to have some legs. You know, if someone wants to say, hey, Mayor of Tucson, let's put a physical protection on this bike lane. How many people do you think you can get to sign that petition? 100, 200, 1,000? I don't know. But uh, translating it offline and talking in real world helps it because I think you're right about the, like, uh, the rhetoric in social media in, in America these days has a, a propensity towards uh, um, dramatic sudden escalation, to, uh, to put it gently. And a key part is when you say, hey, I'm just talking about this. I'm talking about this mile. What do you think about this mile? We're not saying ban cars and uh, reimagine all of American society such that yada, 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 even though that might be your ultimate goal, even though it might not be, but you're just saying, look, we're just talking about this. It's sort of like, you know, when you're, uh, when, like when you're dating in the dating world, you don't say, hey, let's get married and, you know, have 2.5 kids and like live together in this house for 20 years. You say, do you, you want to get a cup of coffee or a drink? Even like, I'm not even going to specify coffee. I'm not, I'm not going to specify what drink, just like you, me, yeah. beverage. Eh? Eh? And like, I think a lot of activism, you really have to break it down to like, hey, this street should be safer, right? And people, that's a harder thing to disagree with. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the interesting things too is helping people understand how their community actually works. And so, uh, like, for instance, in the case of, uh, of of Tucson here, I don't even know whether Tucson's a strong mayor system or not, or whether it's or whether the mayor is one vote of of, you know, the the entire city council. Um, but it is helpful to know. I mean, usually 
whether the mayor is a strong mayor system or not, they're usually the figurehead because they're usually the one politician that is uh, is voted in by the population at large, um, like it is here in Austin. It's a weak mayor system, so the the mayor is is the only city council member member of council who is voted on, you know, by the the entire uh, population at large across all the districts. But my point is is understanding you know, that structure of, you know, political structure in your own neighborhoods. And do you even know who your representative is of your own district if you are broken up into districts? And, and it's also one of those things where I think, I think um, sometimes people can get a little in their heads, especially because a lot of the kind of active towns folks, I think come to, to us from a more of an engineering background of like, it's important to be very, very correct because very bad things happen when you're not very correct in the engineering world. Um, in the political world, like let's say, let's say it's not the mayor. Let's say, oh, that's actually a county road, whatever. But you've got 500 people to sign a petition, and you present it to the mayor, and the mayor says, oh, actually, go yell at the person in suite two B, not the suite two C. And you say, okay, cool. I'm going to take these 500 people and go yell at that person. And a lot of times, the mayor might say, oh, I would totally agree, but you know, that's not up to me. That's up to them. And you say, great, join us then. As we go, it sounds like you agree. So you've endorsed this. That helps us even larger. And I think one thing that happens um, if when you know how to do it right, you know, there's a little bit of when you get the runaround, uh, politically speaking, and, you know, regardless of town or county or whatever, and someone says, oh, I'm I would love to, but I can't. That's someone else. You say, great. You said you'd love to. Uh, Can we count you as an endorser? And. In theory, if they said, like, that's an easy thing. And then when you go to the county person, you say, look, everyone, even the mayor, everyone wants this thing. You have a million things to do in a day. Just make this one of those things. Um, And so there's less, you know, unlike when you're running for office where it is very forgiving if you mess up and you're, like, door knocking in the wrong district. Like, the politicians need to be very right and the candidates. But you as an activist you know, you're saying, look, we need to solve this problem. This problem is big. And I'm going to present it to anyone who would remotely listen. Um, and if you start smaller and localer, you will get routed to the right person. Like if you call Joe Biden and say, Hey, Joe Biden, I would like this fix. Like he's probably not going to respond to your call. Um, and he's not going to route you there. But if you say, Hey, public works department, whatever, like they will, put you to the right place. It's like the front desk at the hotel type of thing. I'm glad you mentioned, you know, the, the, the quote unquote responsibility and the ownership of said public realm, the street, the road, et cetera, because that's one of the, the misperceptions that we often have as a, as public Joe Q public, we're like, Oh, that, that space outside of my door, that's all just kind of the city. The reality is, is that strode that we might be looking at out there might actually be a state owned highway property. And so the jurisdiction over that and the control over that, the city, literally their hands might be tied behind their back and, and in, 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 in being able to deal with that particular um, uh, piece of infrastructure because it's actually owned and operated by uh, the state. And if the state and the city don't have a good working relationship and on the same page with that, that DOT, state DOT would be like, yeah, we don't care. We're, we're going to prioritize the movement of motor vehicles uh, over the, the health and wellness and safety of, of your people. Now, in California, you Sounds guys like are, you live in Austin, Texas. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. That's a very Austin, Texas sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Who heard you? But I don't yeah, know did you? Know. I don't know if you saw, but the uh, uh, CNU just released their uh, freeways without futures uh, report for 2023, and uh, it was alphabetical. So number two on the list was, in fact, I-35 in Austin, Texas, in in downtown. Well, and I think yeah. to to your point, so you know, the mayor might say, "Oh, I can't do that." It's like you know what you could do: literally every other street. And you're like, okay, cool. Maybe that's not the one. Okay, what about the five parallel streets to that? Can we get four of them? Can we get three of them? Like, and I think one of those things that happens so often in politics and so often in life is, you know, people focus on what they can't do. Oh, you know, I, I wish I could fix that. And I think a really important thing as activists and advocates is to say, okay, fine, you can't do that. But what if you made it 
the streets leading up to that big strode into cul-de-sacs. So at least there's fewer, less traffic going onto that strode and, you know, greater safety there. Like, you know, I think recognizing, uh, you know, anyone who's had siblings knows the whole like, oh, okay, you know, they said, don't, don't hit your brother and say, fine, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Like, fine, you can't touch the strode, touch everything else. Like, what, you don't have the strode, but you could do, the, you could double the sidewalks or something. Like, what can you do? Yeah. The, the other thing that I try to uh, emphasize too is that there is power in us coming together uh, as a community. And, you know, and ultimately, if your representatives aren't representing the interests of the populace of the constituency, you vote them out. That's part of what this means. And, you know, and, and that brings us around to uh, this graph that you, you, you sent over is taking a look at voter uh, turnout. And so when you're looking at the people who the voter age turnout uh, across countries and uh, and we do have an international audience. So I know quite a few of you are going to be interested in this. Uh, walk us through this. And, and why did you feel compelled that we, we need to, like, talk about this? Yeah, I think a big thing people often feel, whether that's on social media or in general, is, oh, everyone thinks this, everyone thinks that, everyone loves their cars, everyone hates their whatever. And it's like, well, one, there is no everyone. Like, every, the concept of everyone is a huge lie. Um, and even in the Netherlands, you know, there's 25% of people didn't vote in a recent election. And that's a a huge chunk of people. And if you say, well, oh, the Green Party, you know, they're not getting it. It's like, well, 25% of people would be a very dominant political force. And, you know, in the United States, where it's about 40% of people didn't vote, 40% of people uh, would more than swing almost every single election. And so, so a lot of times political ads and political efforts are about getting voters, uh, people who tend to vote to like change sides. Um, the big thing is, can you get people who are irregular voters or non-voters engaged? And when you think, ah, like, but they don't vote, they don't care. It's like, well, they don't vote and they don't care because politicians aren't offering them anything worth getting. And, you know, if you say, well, why should a person on the bus vote for such and such for president? You say, well, if their stance is your bus is gonna be on time and we're gonna make that work. It's like, well, it's a lot of people on buses who are going to vote. You know, if there's, if you make it easy for people, if you make it uh, really cerebral, or not really cerebral, you make it very tangible. So instead of saying, let's do this international trade policy and a bunch of acronyms and all this stuff, you're like, let's make it so you can cross the street and that your grandma can cross the street and that your kids can cross the street and that they'll be safe. Yeah. Would you like that? And like that's, and I think there's a way of like getting people into the electorate because. Um, I think the, those who want active towns and might feel hopeless about uh, parking defenders and say, oh, the, all those parking defenders. It's like, well, fun fact, those parking defenders aren't the majority of people. Uh, the vast majority of people have never heard of the concept of an active town. And even if you explained it to them 12 times, still wouldn't probably get it. But if you said, hey, isn't it nice when you can cross the street and not get hit by a car? And they would say, yeah. And you said, cool, I have this petition that says, you know, make our town one where people can cross the street better and not get hit by cars, would you sign it? And you're like, yeah, it's like, okay, cool. Then you show it to the politician, here's a thousand people, here's two thousand, whatever the number is, you know, that politician is, wants, wants to serve their community, wants to get reelected. And, you know, they've figured out what they think about healthcare. They figured out what they think about guns or schools or like any of the top big issue taxes. They figured that out. Uh, crossing the street is currently not a huge political divide among the big parties. It is a like a nonpartisan issue, which is a wonderful thing. All you have to do then is say, hey, a lot of people want this. Can you do it? And then your mayor, who might be a completely opposite of you across the political spectrum on every other issue, but they say, yeah, OK, that's a, that we can do. That's not like a whatever thing. And just helping kind of figure out where the conversation's not being had. And I think a big part is you know, you're not, as I said before, you're not looking for perfect alignment. You're looking for alignment on a few things and you make sure those things get done. And so, you know, that happens across the aisle you know, in the United States. We use that metaphor across political parties. 
and just saying like, how do we, okay, who, you know, who are these, you know, 25% of people in Australia and in, in the Netherlands who didn't vote? Why didn't they vote? What do they care about? And how do you get them to be interested in something? And if you say this will materially impact your life in a way that like wages or taxes, some, you know, feels really obscure and people just feel like they're being screwed anyway. But if you say, look, you want some speed bumps? Like, let's talk about that. I think there's some uh, opportunities there. Yeah. It's interesting too. Uh, you, you mentioned, you know, you know, there's that perception that oh, everybody believes this, or everybody, you know, is 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 going to get behind this other thing, or this is what they believe in. Uh, I have to laugh a little bit because uh, Paris just recently had a, a, a vote uh, to to kick yeah. out uh, uh, scooters, electric scooters. And it was like a 90% uh, to, to get rid of them, to boot them out. But then when you actually looked at the number of people who voted, I, it's less than 10% of the Paris population actually voted. So yeah, you got 90% of the people who were motivated to kick the, 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 the scooters out because I think it was literally just a vote on that. I don't know if there was yeah, much and, else and on the ballot. And it's also one of those things where... Um, you know, if you wanted to try to trigger something like that in your community, that's the other way. Like, um, you know, we, we in California do a lot of ballot proposition voting stuff where basically people can put things on the ballot and it's based off of, you know, how many signatures could you get? And, you know, the, the, the threshold is set by, you know, last year's election. And so if last year was the election year where 2% of people voted, you say, okay, this is the big time to get the like, let's you know ban non-emergency vehicles in the downtown square or whatever. And oh, if that election is the third Thursday on the third month. Oh, you mean you know, so you could you cater to this guy just hanging out in the street? Yeah, exactly. No, and this is, and a big part is also like, uh, so this is uh, me a couple months back on uh, Grand Avenue in Oakland. Um, and I forgot why they shut down the street. I, I think like occasionally the police in Oakland just shut down large thoroughfares. Oh, I thought you were protesting. Barriers. I thought you were just taking no, over the street. It was, they just, they just shut down the street and I have a hammock and I was like, cool, if they're going to shut down the street, I'm going to set up this hammock, take a little photo. And a big part is it is Grand Avenue. It is one of the big arterials of our city. And it was so close that some guy could just set up a hammock and hang out there for like, I was there maybe 30 minutes or something. And the world didn't collapse. It's like, okay, clearly we can reimagine our roads a lot more. And I think, one of those big things for uh, advocates of uh, active towns across the country who feel like, where do I start? One thing is like, do something fun that is a street takeover. You know, if you say, look, you know, every, every block party is an active towns protest, you know, every, every jazz fest in the street. So if you say, look, can we just shut down Main Street from 1st to 2nd Street on 4th of July, guess what? The 4th of July parade where they shut down the road, that's an active towns parade. That's a march. Uh, it's you know, a lot of other things are happening too. But if you just started circulating a petition saying, hey, isn't this nice? And shouldn't, is, shouldn't we be able to like liberate our cities for more pleasure and more play and more whatever? You know, there's a lot of people who'd be like, oh yeah, this is fine. We, I'll, okay, I'll just drive on Broadway, not Main Street, whatever. It's like, cool. Like you don't need to ask for everything all at once, you ask for a little bit and a little bit, and, you know, eventually it adds up. But um, yeah, like it's, it's a great, you know, there's a, it's a lot of space in cities. Well, what's interesting too is, you know, I, I love, uh, you know, parking day. I love, uh, you know, open streets events. I love parades because it does reinforce that concept of, oh yeah, Streets are public spaces and they can be used for other things other than just level of service of, of cramming as many motor vehicles through in it quickly as possible. Well, and a big part of that is say, like, and I think those are moments where we kind of, where we win the culture war, so to speak on like, Hey, it's good to liberate your streets. You know, Mardi Gras is the biggest active count towns convention in the world, you know, like, this, the city shuts down. There's not a lot of drive. And it's like people are walking everywhere. Maybe they're stumbling places. But that is a that is a person focused event. And the big thing is you can't just like one that's great in its own right. But if you want to like 
move past Mardi Gras, move past the festival, move past South by Southwest, there's a part where you say, okay, I'm going to make a petition. I'll make a little flyer that just says, you know, what this aspect more often, or we want to do this every Sunday or something. And when you're at that festival, say to people like, hey, this was great. You know, like, here's a flyer. Do you, wouldn't this be so cool if this was a more regular thing? Wouldn't this be so nice if it was that? And just get people when they're having that moment say, yeah, this is cool. And I think one thing that's like really um, promising about kind of active towns and this type of um, political work is you're, you're kind of instantly building constituencies and people very at a certain moments become very radicalized for this. You know, you talk to a person who is just crossing a dangerous street and you say, hey, do you want a better crosswalk? And they'll say, yeah. And if you, you know, give them a flyer and get them to sign the thing, they'll do it then. But five minutes ago or five minutes from them, they're not, you know, that was just like a deeply traumatic moment that they've just kind of rolled with. And you have to interrupt the person at that moment and say, hey, this could be different. You know, like I think uh, humans have a great ability to uh, adjust to new normals, uh, which is sometimes great, sometimes really, really bad. But, you know, being being able to intercept people at that moment when they're like, oh, you know what I'd like right now at this? And you say, cool, can you add your name, help you there? And I think it's one of those things that, you know, people's political identity don't, does not shift all that often in the day. Like if you're a union member, you're not going to like leave the union for 20 minutes and then come back in. Or if you're a CEO, you're not going to be like, well now for five minutes, I'm really pro taxing everything. Like it's, you're, you're kind of like set on your stuff, but you know, the second you know, someone might get out of their gigantic, you know, Ford F-350 to get into their Walmart and, you know, they get out of the car and they feel like someone else's Ford F-350 is about to hit them. They say, you know, there should really be a speed bump here. It's like, when they're driving, they, they don't think that, but that moment, and you're like, cool, find them at that moment, like get them engaged. That is a moment of like uh, potential radicalization. That's a moment where their like, hearts are open to this new possibility. Um, and so capitalizing on that is really important. You know, it's like, uh, like if, you're, if you're an advertiser, you wanna advertise all the time and get people paying attention, but you know, if you're, if you're, if, you know, a DoorDash or whatever, you hit people up really hard at 11 a.m. Say, hey, lunch is coming up. This is this is the time you're open to this thing. Yeah, it's interesting too. Uh, you, you had mentioned, you know, the 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 fact that humans do have the ability uh, to adapt and change with the times, um, but with 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 car brain of the status quo, sometimes it's a little difficult for for them to to make that change and make that shift. <laughs> As was exemplified by poor Jill here. Yeah, and it's and it's such a good, it's such a good example. And I love this tweet um, and the fact that it went viral and all like everything around it because it's such a great example of um, nothing is obvious. You just absolutely cannot assume that people know. Like, there's all these jokes and all these wonderful memes. Like, hey, you just ran smack dab into the point and you know, got concussed like you so you hit the point but you just totally missed it at the same time and that's our role as communicators as advocates as activists to say you know this is jill saying very seriously she's like this didn't work and everyone else in the world is like no this totally did work uh this is what working looks like and it is really important to help people understand what does success look like what are we actually looking for and why that works out and it's one of those things where you know, I, I, in, I live in Oakland and a city council member who I'm a huge fan of, um, about two years ago, um, a person was killed uh, biking and there was, someone said, oh, if only there was a protected bike lane, that wouldn't have happened. And the city council member said, how would that have changed things? And, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, what are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, what you have to say is, that's a great question. Let me explain how that works. And it's, you know, when there's a wall of concrete, cars drive slower and like you just, like in the world of politics, which is fun fact, everything we're all doing all the time, you you have to explain and you have to assume good faith sometimes uh, and really help walk people through it because you're watching, you know, Active Towns, you're listening to this, dear listener and viewer, 
your mayor probably is not, unless they are, in which case your mayor is super cool. Keep being cool, mayor. But like, you are getting this like uh, impromptu college degree in this subject matter, master's degree. That is not normal, that's not typical, that's wonderful. You have this wonderful expertise and you know things like bollards, you know, you know this technology, slip lane, things like that. No one else has any idea what you're talking about. And you just have to say, oh yeah, here's why, you know those weird right turn lanes? Here's why they're bad. And here's what you could do. And here's 20 examples. And in our town, here's three of the examples. And they're like, oh, I just never thought about it. It's like, yeah, because it's infrastructure. And we don't think about infrastructure because it's infra. Like it's that's, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and to your point, yeah, the average citizen doesn't want to become an expert in the technology and the design and the engineering behind what makes a safe street. They just want a safe street. Yeah. And it's, and they don't need to, and your job is not to help them do that. Your job is to say, Hey, it can be done. And so if someone says, Oh, you know, I, um, you know, I really hate when X, Y, Z happens. You say, Oh, well, there's like 20 different engineering solutions for that, but it's good to know that you don't like when X, Y, Z happens. Um, but the, and, and this is the thing that like, uh, city governments get wrong a lot, uh, watching my language, uh, but they get it wrong a lot where they say to people in their community, where they say, hey, we'd like to make this road safer. What do you think? And then people say all sorts of things. What they should say is we are making the road safer. Here's three ways we're going to do it. We are going to implement this in two months because this is very quick to do. And it's going to be a one-year pilot, two-year pilot, five-year pilot, uh, and we'll get feedback. But like, before we implement this, what do you want? And it's just a big difference because at the end of the day, as we talk about, like people adjust to the new normal. What people just want is not change. Like they don't want to be disrupted. They want to live their lives, which you know, great. And so you say, cool. Let's just like switch everything today. Like there's the um, wonderful picture of uh, Denmark or there's some country where they the one day where everyone switched what side of the road they drive on. And, you know, if you I said, we're Sweden. Gonna roll, yeah. yeah, Sweden, if you're like, we're going to roll this out as a six month pilot and every other day switch back and forth, people are like, no, just either do it or don't do it. And <laughs> just, you know, like in California, the biggest complaint about the high speed rails that takes so long, like, you know, the kinds of the cost doesn't make any sense to people like 500 bi- like billions, trillion, like whatever that just does not mean stuff to people. And if you said, cool, what do we need to do to finish this high-speed rail in three years? And we're going to just do that. You're like, okay, fine. I just, just do it. You know, Stop talking about it. Just do it. Yeah. And I think that's something that like in a world where uh, this might come as a huge shock, but so there's some problems in the world and some of them take a really long time to fix and are really complicated. Uh, Roads are not one of those things. Like I, you know, there's, a, you know, the slip lane by the slip lane where I'm most likely to die uh, actually got closed down this week uh, because there's just some road construction on it and they closed it down. They just said, OK, let's put up some like big plastic barriers. We have some construction crew. They just did it like, you know, you and I could go close down. I think like protesters do this all the time. They close down freeways, not for the point of closing down freeways to say freeways are bad. They tend to do it about other things. But it shows you can close down freeways. It's not that hard. It takes maybe, you know, a hundred people if it's just the people, or a couple of people and some Jersey barriers. Like, but these the implementation is very quick. Um, you know, in Paris and sometimes, and Seville, and sometimes Mother it. Nature can help. You know, in 1989, uh, the the big earthquake took down the Embarcadero Freeway, and and what happens? People adjust. They down. Yeah, and it's one of those things where. You know, we talk about a lot in our kind of nerdy, wonky community about induced demand. Um, and there's also demand destruction. The other the other way is true. And so if you say, well, how do we make sure people get around safer by bikes or electric wheelchairs or what have you? you? say, okay, well, let's make that easier. And what about cars? Like, well, if we make it easier, if we make that harder, people will switch. Like, people don't disappear into the ether. They figure out different solutions. Like, humanity is very clever. We're very creative. And, you know, like there's, it's our role as ad- activists and activists, advocates and activists to present solutions 
and highlight the intensity of the problem and how serious we want it done. Um, you know, it's like one of those things and, where, and that's what, and that's actually what you're kind of doing. So I'll transition over to your website here and talk a little bit about the fact that yes, there is a subset of the 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 listenership and the viewership that uh, is tuning into the Active Towns podcast and the Active Towns channel. That um, you know, at most, maybe what you're going to do is you know talk about this with your neighbor, but some of you might want to take that next step and become more of an engaged activist and act and advocate. Uh, talk a little bit about the training that you are trying to do uh, to help move that along and help make that uh, a little bit of an easier process. Yeah. And so I, I do a couple of things. One, I have a kind of free once a month training on a topic. So I uh, recently did a kind of beginner's guide to getting your bike lane. I do a how to overcome the opposition, but just a big like hey, let's talk, let's get more thinking about this. Um, and those are free and open to the public. But I also do one-on-one -on -one or small group trainings, um, Zoom hour-long conversation, where we talk people through, like, what are they trying to do? What, you know, what, what do they want to do? So, you know, I've had a session with an activist in Connecticut who wanted a protected bike lane on their street. And they were saying, you know, for them, the big issue is the mayor could not give less of a crud about what they had to say. And... It's like, okay, well, so they know what they want, but they're, and they know the issue is that the mayor doesn't care. So let's talk about how you get a mayor to care. And, you know, let's, how do you get more people engaged? How do you two talk about this? You know, and I had a session with a person who you know, wanted a speed bump and we we're articulating, you know, is it a speed bump? Is it something else? Like a, a kind of a greater road closure. And a big thing they hit on was they said, like, look, I feel really uncomfortable talking to my neighbors about this. Like I feel very uncomfortable uh, talking to a stranger about this. And most of our session was like, here's how you get comfortable talking to a stranger. Like you are doing these people a huge favor. And I think a big part for me, which I'm trying to do is help people articulate their vision, help people articulate what they want and then break it down into digestible things. So I'm not here to say, here's what you should do. Here's who you should be. Here's what you should want. You know, I'm here to say, oh, you want to have a car-free plaza in your city, you know, every Friday? It's like, cool. Do you, do you think it'd be easier if it was just every day a car-free thing? Like, why just Friday? Why not Tuesday? Let's talk about that. Because I think a lot of times um, it can be very lonely in this world where you say, oh, well, I'm the only one who cares. And so anytime I bring up this idea, my you know, partner rolls their eyes and my friends say, oh, here we go again. And I'm like, okay, no, let's like sit down. Tell me your idea. Tell me your, you know, we should just have free shuttles to the park and, you know, you know, barbecue bus to the park and, you know, ban cars from it. It's like, okay, if that's what you want, there, you could win that. Here's what that would take. Here's a way that might be an easier path to victory. Here's an easier, might be an easier goal. But like, these are all learnable skills. These are all teachable skills. Uh, you know, no one comes into the world knowing all this stuff. Uh, you learn it through experience, you learn it through people talking to you, you learn it through books. Um, and you know, I have a lot of life doing that. And so for someone who says, you know, hey, I'm in, Can I'm in one of the many wonderful cantons of America uh, and I really want to get a bus bowl about how the heck do I do that? And it's like, great, that's a great goal. Let's talk. Yeah. And and so the part of part of what you're doing is is helping with this. And this is sponsor an activist. And this is your map um, from one of the uh, recent trainings that you've done. So you've you're starting to, you know, get people tuning in from around the country uh, and uh, e even somebody up in uh, Alaska. Good deal. <laughs> Talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the types of people who are tuning in and joining in on these webinars. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, and there's, there's a lot of folks from kind of all over who've been tuning in uh, to the big group ones, which I think is wonderful. And a lot of times it's folks who say, Hey, there is a you know bike coalition of my county, but what I really want is this like one hyper specific thing. And they're, you know, they're so busy fighting the Death Star, they like, you know, but I need these stormtroopers out of my house kind of thing. And just one of those like, yeah, you you can win that fight. That is, you don't need, you know, like, you don't need the, the I guess the Jedi's to keep going this metaphor, but like, you don't need big headquarters to send in air support to this. Like, this is something you can do yourself. 
And so I think there's a lot of folks who are stepping in who are like, oh yeah, I tried this thing or I'm really frustrated. Or, you know, there are a lot of bike advocacy groups that are um, all volunteer run. And so, you know, they've kind of talked with each other and it's sort of this just greater need to cross pollinate. You know, as someone who now talks to lots of activists about this stuff, who's worked with a lot of activists on a lot of issues, there's just learnings and lessons that I can kind of help cross uh, get through. And a big part is helping people um, kind of recognize that, that they are activists, that they are advocates, that they that this is a kind of quote unquote job title. This is a skill set. This is just not just, oh, they want this thing. They want this different world. And how do you learn about that? You're not, uh, you know, it's like if you say, hey, let's let's get a bunch of doodlers together. We're going to talk about painting. Like that's just a helpful thing uh, to really articulate that. And, you know, for that map and the sponsoring part, um, you know, there's some people in the world who don't have a lot of free time, uh, uh, but they have a little, they have more money than they have free time and they still share this vision. And, you know, maybe they say, okay, well, I'm not going to go knock on a door. I'm not going to go pass out a flyer, no interest in that stuff, but Hey Carter, here's some money. I saw you have this person, you know, Manhattan, Kansas, go give that person a couple of free sessions. And it's like, great. You know, I, I know people across the country who are looking to kind of hone these skills and, you know, I think it's one of those things where, you know, it's not, um, you know, it's not like you know, people need kind of one to four sessions to really get started and going and kind of get into trouble uh, in their own right and then kind of get stuck on a new thing. Um, so it is like, hey, let's get you started. Let's help you get that um, translate from that. Oh, you know, it would be great if to, OK, now I have a campaign. I have a plan. I'm going to go about doing that. Um, and so that person just needs a little little shove out of the nest, a little support, a little like, you know, it's dangerous out there. Here's your sword. Here's your map. Good luck. Um, you know, that's what I'm here to do. Help people, you know, when they email you say, hey, I love this active town thing. What am I supposed to do? You know, you're saying the right thing. Like, go talk to a neighbor, forward this around, talk to more people. But the other part is like, you know, there's a lot of wonderful books uh, you could read. Uh, you could also talk to me. I'm here and, you know, we're here to help people with that. And the other thing I, I, I try to emphasize, too, is that it's one thing to, like, you know, get that momentum uh, rolling, grow the the people who are under the tent and, you know, and, and feel like, oh, OK, we, we're, we're starting to communicate as a, a community. And now we've got some leadership, you know, stepping in and committing to saying, hey, we're going to do this. We're going to start prioritizing change here. The next step is hold them accountable. And so here it says that the entire uh, Oakland City Council is making road safety uh, a budget priority for this year. And it goes on to talk a little bit about that. But I also saw uh, in a recent tweet from you that, you know, the mayor just hasn't is, you know, isn't sticking behind, you know, even just getting a simple protected bike lane done. So that's that's the mayor of Berkeley. Uh, so oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, mi- I'm missing I'm missing the, uh, the I, I'm I'm cross uh, our, our uh, I'm crossing no, my well, wires here. That's a huge, yeah. but it's a huge thing. We'll talk about that. That's a whole thing. Um, no, but it's one thing I think also for like transportation you know, for our community to recognize is that um, we're not asking for really controversial stuff, uh, and as long as we ask it with a loud voice, it is easier. And so. Oakland, you know, over 30 people were killed by cars last year in Oakland. Uh, there's been a lot of news coverage. There's been a lot of community vigils. And there's been this effort with, you know, over 1,600 petition signers, over 20 groups have signed on to this, including the Nurses Association, the Teachers Association. And something like this, it's such an easy slam dunk as a politician to say, I save lives. You know, I don't have to wait for the federal government to pass some, like, gun control anything, or I don't have to wait for outside whoever to do whatever, we save lives. We did a bunch of speed bumps. You know, if all we did was a thousand speed bumps in Oakland, there's probably better solutions than that, but like that would work. Um, and they just, you know, our role as activists is to say, here's a thing that you could do, here's a win and it matters. And now they've all said this, this is our intention. And, you know, we're going to deliver the letter and the petition to kind of really say, great job, good intention. You got to follow through. You know, it's uh, it's kind of like January 1st. Good job. Good New Year's resolutions. Like, man, going to bed at 10, a, at 10 p.m. and, you know, eating your vegetables. That's great. All right. Let's let's make sure you do that. Like if you actually follow through, that's the key part. 
um, because you know, we don't need promises, we need concrete as a, just a nation. And that's a big part. And I think to your point about, and so I have a lot of hope for Oakland, it's a great city. Um, and I think a lot of our politicians are open to that change. Uh, to take Berkeley as an example, um, so the mayor of Berkeley, uh, yeah, like that's, there's this bike lane, proposed bike lane thing, and it's one of those pos moments where you know, the mayor and the council had the opportunity to say, look, this is really important. You know, there's a couple of question marks left, but we are going to move heaven and earth to make sure this is done by July 4th, you know, happy Independence Day, car free, you know, oil Independence Day, whatever. Like, you could say, this is complicated and I commit to solving this problem by this date. And that's great. And instead they just punted, which is, and they said, oh, well, we're going to work on that. It's like, yeah, that's, uh, if I say, if you guys say you're going to do the dishes, I said, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll do them. Okay, when? When are you going to do the dishes? And if I said, I'm going to do them tomorrow, I have a block in, I put it on my calendar, like, okay, now I can believe that. And it's a key thing for activists and advocates to see, like, when is someone saying, yeah, 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 you know, cool your jets, don't worry, I got this. And when are they saying, I'm going to do it from 10 a.m. to 10.30, it's on my calendar, and da, da, da. And like, and when a politician doesn't do that, when they say, yeah, 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 whatever, you say, BS, like what's going on? Like, so I, I don't live in Berkeley. Uh, so technically the mayor of Berkeley couldn't care less about what I have to say. Um, but he is running to be my state senator. Exactly. And the city, one of the city council members in Oakland, who is one of the people who said traffic violence is a serious problem, I'm going to address it. He is also running to be my state senator. And as I, I think it's really important that um, it's fine to make people upset. You know, does, is the mayor of Berkeley, you know, I don't know what level of thinks about me, but like, you know, I kind of like I poked him a little bit saying like, hey, you know, publicly, like, why would I vote for someone who can't even get this done? This is a pretty easy thing to do. Why, why should I vote for him? You know, maybe it's good. To, maybe it's a great answer to that. But right now I haven't heard one. And helping people recognize like, you're allowed to say to a politician, I didn't like that thing you did. I want you to do better. I have choices. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find someone who will treat me right. You know, it's much like in the dating world. If you're on like a first date or a second date with someone and they say some weird thing, you're like, nah, I'm, I could do better. And it's, I think, very important for, you know, we talk about uh, the rhetoric escalating a lot. It's, um, it's important to recognize when you do have the opportunity to do better. Uh, so for example, this mayor is running to be my state senator. So he, in theory, is more open than other times. If he wasn't running, then yeah, you'd be like, okay, I don't care. You don't live in my town, who cares? And as activists and advocates recognizing that there are windows of opportunity that arise, there's windows that we can open ourselves. And that's just kind of knowing how to look for that, knowing how to make that happen and use those moments. Um, is really key and you know also like playing it delicately you know i just to take this micro example you know you could say oh i am committing to getting this done in august and this is important and yada 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 it's like okay cool well we'll see what happens in august and maybe i will vote. like if he pulls it off by august yeah maybe, maybe i'll vote for him like who knows uh but i'm not saying you're the worst person in the world and, ah, and you know well, I think this is a this is actually a really important thing to to, to point out, and it is that as a uh, a member of society, as a voter, you have a vote. You do have some influence, and you can also uh, use your network as a quasi bully pulpit and be able to spread the message and to be able to call people out on, you know, stuff that, you know, hey, this shouldn't be that hard. And, you know, now you're running for state office. Why should I, you know, vote for you? And, and knowing how to hold, like what to hold someone accountable for. So you're in Austin, Texas. Um, there's things, you know, you have a weak mayor system, as you're saying. And there's stuff that like your mayor can't stop highway expansion. Like that is not, they don't, that is not one of the tools they have. There are a lot of other tools that they have to do all sorts of other things. 
and you're and you saying to them, I'm going to judge you based off of the tools that you have the ability to use and that you didn't do that. One, that shows that you are a very engaged and informed voter. Uh, and two, kind of reminds them that they do have more power than they want to. So like when they say, I'm glad you, I'm, I'm glad you said that too, because that's kind of what is happening here in Austin is that uh, a fairly large can, you know, amount of the constituency of the city council and of the mayor is piping up to say, this is a problem. You know, we don't want TxDOT just to run run roughshod through uh, the city, and we want to see something that is a better solution, whether it's completely torn down and removed and rerouted, or whether it's buried and we reconnect the city. Um, and so city council has gotten that message, and so they're starting to exert some power back and some pushback towards uh, the state, you know, the state DOT. Uh, it's not to say that they're going to be successful because the state has a great deal of power, um, but at least they are, uh, for the most part, not all members of the city council, but the vast majority of them are are pushing back and are, uh, are, are basically saying the right things from the perspective of the vast majority of, of the population. Um, and when I say the vast majority of the population, what I'm really saying is that uh, in election after election after election here in in the city of Austin, uh, the electorate has voted for bonds to basically to tax themselves to be able to build out a safer, more equitable, uh, more welcoming streetscape and environment to try to encourage more transit use and try to encourage more people to be able to walk and bike because it's perceived as being a positive quality of life measure which it is. Yeah. Well, and this is a thing that, um, you know, the, the, there's a joke of like the hardest words to ever say, or I'm sorry, but some of the easiest words to ever say is, Oh, you know what they should do? They should do yeah. this. Yeah. And, exactly. and, and if you're the mayor, you know, this is, uh, when you don't have power to implement a thing, it's really easy to yell at the people who do have power. And I recognize the irony of me saying this and us saying this, but like a thing that, Activists in Austin who would be voting, who are voting for these bonds, who are saying, saying, okay, hey, city council, what? great, keep trying to stop that freeway. In the meantime, where's the bus only lane? Where are the bus only lanes in our community? community? And they might say, oh, well, Oak dot, you know, okay, sorry, uh, Texas dot DOT is not allowing us to do it. You say, okay, well, here are the roads that the city of Austin fully owns itself. Uh, here are the ones that make a grid around the Department of Transportation in Texas, which Austin's the state capital. You're like, what if we made the capital grounds a car-free plaza for the 12 blocks around? Like, just you do do the things. <laughs> well, you, you want to know do. the irony? Yeah, is that's literally what they did on the other side of the state capital? Is they turned it into a pedestrian plaza? <laughs> Great, that's such a good. And you saying this is so wonderful. This is so wonderful. And you say, hey, like, and you know, petitioning there and that, but like. It's, um, you know, do the things you can do. And that's, I think, the big part about um, liberation where people say, oh, what I really want is this, you know, solar punk, hope punk future where it's all whatever. It's like, great, that's, okay, what is the step that you could take from here to there? And yes, that is incrementalism and that's frustrating. Uh, and maybe you take a slightly larger step or you take a small step now that makes the next larger step possible. But you got to take that step and you can't be satisfied with someone who says, oh, yeah, I agree with you, but I'm not going to do anything about it. It's like, OK, well, I'll get someone in this office who will do something about it. And the thing about traffic safety in active towns is there's a million solutions. Like, you know, if we say, look, South by Southwest is great. How do we have it three times a year and more festivals and we close down more downtown and da, da, da. And like. Or how do we take over I-35 and put South by Southwest on the freeway one day and have like a big old whatever? It's like, what, what can you do? Think creatively. Um, and there's a million answers out there, which is really cool. Yeah. So we're basically two white dudes, you know, talking about uh, these things. Uh, how do we, uh, you know, do a better job of trying to really um, activate and get uh, members of the community that, you know, can become activists and become advocates uh, to really represent the, the nature, the true spirit of, of the community. Uh, in, in any, any wisdom in terms of, you know, how, you know, people can you know, sort of 
find their voice to be able to uh, to represent their communities a little better? Yeah, I mean, that's an extremely important question. And I think a big part is making it easy for people to get involved and help out. And that's not just saying, hey, here's the stack of flyers, which give them the stack of flyers, but it's asking for something that a lot of people will want. So, you know, here in Oakland, it's an extremely diverse city, lots going on. And the proposal that I'm pushing on is getting $20 million for Safer Street funding. Not saying any particular project, not saying any particular solution, just street should be safer, let's get some more money for that. And that makes it easier for you know groups in historically ignored and overlooked parts of the city to speak up and say, hey, that funding should come to us. We say, great, yes, we, we need this. The answer is everything. Like, I think a lot of times, um, you know, there's, there's a huge history in America of racism, in particular racist urban policy. Uh, you know, freeways are white man's road through black man's home historically. And it's really important to recognize that there is very well-founded mistrust of any time someone says, hey, you know how we should re, you know, change up a community. We you know what we should do. We should do X, Y, and Z. Um, and that mistrust is there because most historic changes have hurt existing populations, have hurt and marginalized already marginalized people. And so coming in and being okay saying, hey, I have this idea. I would like us to be not hit by cars. Can we talk about how, how to make this work for you all? And that's such an important way to build bridges across communities and different ability levels. You know, folks who are in wheelchairs versus people who are blind have different needs. And kind of coming in that uh, with that understanding of, hey, I have a lot of energy, I have a lot of enthusiasm, uh, and maybe more resources and more free time than other folks, but you don't necessarily have the best solution, but you have a lot of the resources to come in and say, hey, I would like to apply these resources to solutions you would like, let's talk. Um, I think a lot of times activists who come from privileged communities who have privileged backgrounds can get really frustrated when they say, oh, I'm doing this thing to help out other people and why aren't they helping out more? It's like, well, you have a lot of free time. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're watching Active Towns, like you have a lot of free time, you have resources, you have flexibility, and that's wonderful. I'm not saying, you know, that's bad or anything. It's just, uh, you know, when you're talking to people who are, whose bus is late and they're really pissed that their bus is late, they're pissed because they need their bus to be on time so they can get to their work. And so you can't say, well, I hosted a webinar for two hours at you know 7 p.m. and why didn't they tune in? You have to say, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna wait on that bus. I'm gonna go sit on that bus with some flyers and I'm gonna talk to people. And that might feel uncomfortable, that might be a new thing. So what? That's how we do it. And it's, the other part is you're not doing anyone any favors. You know, it's our liberations are collectively bound up in each other. Like literally you cannot win anything worth winning by yourself. You're going to only be able to do it with other people. So if you want your bus to be on time, you also need everyone else's bus to be on time. You need everyone else who gets on that bus route to be on time. And so, yeah, you your job is to be that you know, well-meaning nerd who wants to just chit chat with people and say, hey, let's talk about crosswalks. And they'll be like, okay. Or they'll say, why the hell should I talk to you? And you said, that's a great point. Uh, I'm here and I have this thing. I would love to talk to you. And they might say, buzz off. You say, okay. I'm going to talk to the 20 other people on this bus. Like you're, you're allowed to not be universally popular, um, which I am saying to this crowd, also into this mirror of the camera, which you know I need to hear occasionally. But like, it's you're not going to someone's not going to be happy. That's fine. You know, your goal is to get a lot of people on your side, and what your side is is the side that a lot of people want. And it's you know it's really important to ask the right question because I think if you gave most people in America, a magic wand and say, you get to change one transportation related policy. They would say, oh, can we just like flatten a lot more buildings and make a lot more parking lots? And you said like, you know, that was American history is that. And you said, okay, besides that, what I'm hearing is you want it to be easy to get to downtown. And they're like, yeah. And you say, well, how about these five solutions? Would that make your life easier? And you find the one. And so, you know, if you think of yourself as like, uh, the waiter a little bit, or the restaurateur saying like, okay, I, here's the menu, here's what I got. I'm not gonna sell that. I'm not gonna be pushing those solutions. Those solutions are terrible. Uh, but here are some solutions. I'd be happy with any of these things. What do you want? And people say, oh, I, you know, bus bulb outs. Sure, you're like, great, let's talk about bus bulb outs. Um, but you know, you're not, 
and I, I think also like coming in with the humility of you're just some person, you're just doing some thing, you're making some friends, you're going to step on toes and kind of coming in with that knowledge of like, hey, is this cool if um, is going to make your life easier. And you know, that could be a little hard for some ego driven people, but it's not impossible. These are all learnable skills. And so happy to chat with more people on those details. Love it. Love it. So Carter Lavin, carterlavin.com. Uh, folks, if you are interested in, in getting some more information about uh, uh, becoming more engaged in your community, uh, becoming an activist, becoming an advocate, being more successful at it, uh, look it up. Again, Carter, thank you so very much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. It's been an absolute joy, joy and honor. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Carter Lavin and got a few nuggets of wisdom. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just hit that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell to customize your notification preferences. I'll be back soon with another episode. So until then, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.